Right, okay, so in today's video, we're gonna have a look at proving some of these trigonometry rules within the uh, further trigonometry section of the GCSE. Uh, one thing I just wanna make very clear though is that you should have a very good understanding already of how to use these rules before you go and try and learn these on how to actually prove them. All of these would be very unique exam questions if they were to come up in the exam, so it's very important that you know how to use these first. I do think that's a little bit contradictory though that you have to learn how to use them before you actually know how they are created and made, um, but this is gonna really focus on actually looking at proving them. So it's very, very important that you know how to use them first. And I am gonna have a bit of a um, idea here that you are gonna have to have a good understanding of Socrates and Pythagoras on some of these as well. Um, so if you don't, I would suggest that you go and practice your Pythagoras, your, your Sokotoa, and obviously using these formulas before you actually look uh, any further at these. But let's have a look. We're going to prove the sine rule, the area of a triangle using sine and the cosine rule. We're going to do them in that order. I think that's the order of difficulty really as well. I think the cosine rule is probably the hardest out of the three to prove. But let's get started. Okay, so first looking at the sine rule. Now I've got a triangle here and I'm going to label it up just like we would when we we're normally using the sine rule. So I'm going to say that this little corner is big A, and this is little a. I'm going to call the top one, just moving around clockwise, B and B. And I'm going to call the last one here, big C and little c. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line in for the height of the triangle perpendicular to the base. And if I do that, let's move slightly. And if I do do that, uh, what I'm, I'm going to get here is two right angle triangles. Okay, so this would form a right angle down at the bottom here. Now what I can do is I can label this height as a new line. I'm going to call it x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an expression for x using the two right angled triangles. So if I start with the one on the left and we think of this angle here, angle A, I can find an expression for x using my normal Sokotoa rules. So that line x is the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So this is going to be my opposite. And we also have C here being the hypotenuse. There we go. So let's just draw that in hypotenuse, there we go. And when we have the opposite in the hypotenuse, we use sine, don't we? We use our SOH triangle, if we like using formula triangles. So to find an expression for x, I would do O over H. Sine is O over H. So I can make the statement over here, I can say, okay, well, sine A equals O over H, O being the x, and H, the hypotenuse, being the C. Okay, so sine A is x over C. Now, if I want to get an expression for x, I can times both sides by c at this point to get rid of this denominator. And what I end up with is my expression, which will be c sine a equals x. Okay, I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side of the triangle. I'm going to do it for the angle c now. So if we do the same thing, we can say sine c equals, this time the opposite is still x, but this time the hypotenuse there for O over H, the hypotenuse is now the A here. So I can make the same statement, but it would be x over A. And again, to get an expression for x here, we can times both sides by A to remove this denominator. And my expression here will be A sine C, that equals x. What I now have is two expressions for x. We've got the one on the top here, which is C sine A, and the one on the bottom, which is A sine C. And they're both equal X, so actually I can just say that they both equal each other. So if we set them both equal to each other, and we can do that in either order, I'll start with the top one. We can say, okay, well, C sine A has to equal A sine C. And there we have something which is slightly resembling the sine rule. Now in order to make this actually turn into the sine rule now, all I've got to do is divide both sides by the sine C and the sine A. And we can do that in one step or we can do it in two. Now it's up to you. I'm going to do it in one step just to avoid uh, creating too much writing here. But I'm going to divide both sides by sine C. Okay, so when we divide by the right hand side by sine C, it's going to disappear and it's going to go underneath the C sine A. And I'm also going to divide both sides by sine A. So I'm also going to divide by sine A which again is going to remove sine A from the left and put it as a denominator on the right. And if we actually go about that, let's have a look. We would have C over sine C equals A over sine A. 
there we go and that's resembling pretty much the full of our our sine rule there so we've obviously not got our b's involved but we've got c over sine c equals a over sine a now if what i do is i'm going to remove some of these di pick, uh, drawings off the diagram let's get rid of some of this okay let's get rid of our hypotenuses let's get that letter back that i've just gotten rid of b down the bottom now if instead, rather than creating the height going from B down to the little b there, that, that perpendicular height that way, if instead I was to do the perpendicular height going from A down to little a, I could create a similar expression for B's and C's just there. So I could have sine, I, I would have exactly the same process, but I'd have B's and C's in my formula. So what I would have is I would end up having C over sine C equals B over sine B. And again, Obviously, we know that a over sine a equals c over sine c from this formula, okay, the one that we've just created down the bottom. So in doing so, and in doing it all again just in a rotation of the triangle, I would end up with this formula here. I'm not going to do it all again because it would just, just be the same process, just with slightly different letters. But I would end up with b sine b equals c over sine c, okay? And obviously, looking at our two formulas here, they both have c sine c in it, so therefore a over sine a must equal b over sine b, which also must equal c over sine c. So again, we could do it all again. We could, you know, it take twice as long for me to show you all of that, but it's exactly the same, just a rotation of the triangle. But that's how we go about proving the sine rule. So obviously the full sine rule there, we would also add to the end of this one here. We'd have it equals b over sine b, and we've managed to prove the the sine rule there. Okay, so that's the sine rule, and we're going to have a look at the area of a triangle next. Okay, so looking at proving the area of a triangle using sine. Now I'm going to label this triangle up slightly differently, and you'll see why, just purely because I want to have the base being a particular letter here, just to uh, add a bit more clarity to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the base A and the top big A, and then it doesn't really matter either way here, let's just go for B down here, and little B here, and big C here, and a little C here. Now I'm going to follow a very similar process. I'm going to split this triangle up again into two right angle triangles using the height there. So creating a little right angle triangle on the left and on the right. But I'm just going to have a look at how I can actually create the area of a triangle for using these letters. Now we know that our actual formula for the area of a triangle, um, you know, when we have the base and we have the height, is um, half base times height. So we know that the area normally is half base times height, not using any trigonometry there. So half base times height. Now I'm just gonna have a look, what are the expressions for the base and the height? Because if I can get an expression for the base and the height, then I can create it using a little bit of trigonometry here. So the base for us is this little a. Okay, so my base is a. So I can already start off part of my formula. I can say, okay, well the area equals half a, that's my half base part. Okay, so that's that bit done, half a. All we need to do is times it by the height, and we've got to just create an expression for the height there. So let's call the height x, just like we did on our last one, and we just need to create an expression for that. Now we have two options, we could use the triangle on the right, or we could use the triangle on the left. Now just to keep in format with the uh, formula that we, we recognise, I'm going to use angle c over here. So using a bit of Socotera again, we've got the opposite here, which is x, and I've got the hypotenuse here, which is b. And we know again, s o h sine is o, o over h. So that'd be sine c, if we're using this angle down here, using our letter, so sine c. Okay, so if we had uh, this angle here to work out the height, to find x, we would do O times H, sorry, S times H, obviously if we're trying to work out the opposite here, we do S times H, and that would be uh, sine C times B, or B times sine C. So X equals B, the hypotenuse, multiplied by sine C, which obviously we can get rid of the time sign there, and we can just write B sine C. So an expression there for our height is B sine C. So looking back at the top, there's our height done, b sine c. And if we put this all together, so if we slot our height back up into our formula here, so we've got half a for the base, and the height being my new expression here, which is b sine c. And then we can get rid of that time sign in the middle. So bringing that all down and simplifying this all down, we get a final area there of half a multiplied by 
B sine C. There we go. And we could do any variation of those letters if we just move the triangle around or move the letters around. We could have half B, C, sine A, half A, C, sine B. But obviously this is the one that we recognize here for area. So we have area equals half A, B, sine C. And that's how you prove the area of a triangle using, using sine there and using some of our further trigonometry. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, and finishing these three off, we can look at proving the cosine rule. Now, very similar to the first one, I'm going to label it up again. So I'm going to say this is A, this is B, this is C, and then the opposites are obviously the little versions of the letters. There we go. And again, I'm going to split this up into two right angle triangles using the height. So I'm going to say the height here is X again. Now, the only thing that I'm going to have to do slightly differently this time is I'm also going to have a look at uh, an additional length here, and I'm going to go from A to, the, to this little cutoff point for the height here. Again, we could do it on the other side, but I'm going to do it on this way because it makes our formula more recognizable like the one we're used to seeing, but we could do it on either side. Now let's have a look. I've got two triangles here, left and right. Now if I look at um, some expressions that I can create. So if I have a look at this right triangle to start with, the one on the right here, okay? So I'm just going to label this the right triangle. Um, obviously because this, this height here makes a right angle down the bottom, so we've got two right angle triangles. Now in order to find an expression for A this time, okay, so let's have a look for this length here, I can actually say that I can use a bit of Pythagoras. So in order to find that A, I would need the two other sides using Pythagoras. Now I've got one of them, I've got X here as one of the shorter sides, but I don't have this one here. But I could find that out, okay, because the full length of the base is B, and I've labelled the little base over here Y. So this base here of the right triangle, I could say is the full length B minus the length Y. So I'm going to have that expression there as the length of the base, so B minus Y. So using Pythagoras, I would square those two sides uh, in order to get A squared. So if I write that down, I would have to do X squared plus b minus y squared, and that would give me a squared. And that's a little expression there for how I would find a squared. Now I can expand that bracket out, okay, so that's obviously a double bracket, that b minus y. I'm going to expand it out in one step though, rather than writing it out. So b times b would give us b squared. We'd have b times the negative y, we'd have that twice, so we'd have minus 2by. And then we'd have negative y times negative y, which would give us y squared, positive y squared, and that equals a squared. There we go, so expanding all that out. Uh, that's our little expression there for a squared. Uh, if we look at the left one now and see what we can get for that, so let's label this over here, the left triangle. Okay, so that's this one here. I'm going to do exactly the same. Okay, so I'm going to find this time a little expression for C. So I'll do exactly the same thing. This one's a little bit nicer because we do actually have uh, one of the shorter sides just as Y this time. It's not going to have that double bracket going on. But in order to get C squared, again, I would do X here, the shorter side, and I'd use Y here, the shorter side. So nice and easy, I would just do X squared plus Y squared, and that would give me C squared. Okay, so I've used Pythagoras to find those two hypotenuses of those two right angled triangles that we've split it up into there. Now what I've got is an expression on the right here that I can rearrange that will allow me to sub it into this one on the left. So instead of writing this one as x squared plus y squared equals c squared, if I minus y squared from both sides, I get the expression x squared equals c squared minus y squared. And now I have an x squared in both. Okay, so if I replace the x squared here on the left, which I'm going to underline, with this expression here, okay, that's just going to remove the x's from this formula. Obviously, we know in the cosine rule we don't have x's in our formula, do we? We just have a's, b's, and c's. So let's get rid of the x squared on the left by subbing in this c squared minus y squared. So if I write that in, what do we have? We have c squared minus y squared, and then the rest of everything there. So plus b squared minus 2by plus y squared equals a squared. There we go. Almost there, let's have a look if this can simplify at all. First thing that I've noticed here, let's see what color is going to be best here. First thing is we've got a minus y squared and a plus y squared. So they're going to cancel each other out. So let's rewrite this with them gone. So we've got c squared plus b squared 
minus 2by equals a squared. There we go, and hopefully you're quite familiar with the cosine rule if you're watching this video. So you'll probably see that it's actually starting to look a little bit like the cosine rule. Now we've got a squared at the start on the right there equals c squared plus b squared minus 2by. Now the only thing that I need to get rid of here now is this y. Okay, and if I can find an expression for y, then I should be able to remove that. So let's have a look how we could create an expression for y. So our final step here, let's have a look. So y is obviously this length here. And how could we find an expression for that? Now, if we use the angle A, what lengths do I actually have? How could I find Y? Now, Y there is adjacent to that angle. And we have C already that we've been looking at, that um, the hypotenuse there. So using cos, oh, using cos C A H, we know that A, the adjacent, is C times A. Okay, we cross that out and it's C times A. Okay, so we know that A, the adjacent, which is what we're trying to find, the, the, the letter Y here, the adjacent equals C cos times the hypotenuse. Okay, so if we just plug these letters in here, A's the adjacent, which is Y, so Y equals the hypotenuse, which is C, so C times cos A. Okay, that's an expression for Y, C cos A. Let's rewrite that. C cos A. And that is how I would find uh, the length Y there, the adjacent. I would do C times cos A, C being the hypotenuse there, uh, C times cos A. Okay, so that's our expression there for Y. Now all I need to do is replace the Y in my formula here that we, we underlined a second ago, so this one here, with C cos A. So let's do that, let's just get rid of the Y and put this C cos A in, and what do we get? We get C squared plus B squared minus two B, now not writing Y but writing C cos A, and that now equals A squared. There you go, and that is your cosine rule there. It's written back to front, isn't it? But I could always rewrite it, so let's put a squared at the start instead. So just rewriting it, we have a squared equals, and let's rearrange the c and b, just to keep it in alphabetical order, b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And there is your proof of the cosine rule. Definitely one of the more complicated ones there. It's, uh, there's a lot of writing there, I appreciate that, but it, is, it definitely is one of the more complicated ones. Okay, but that is how you prove your sine rule, your area of a triangle using sine and your cosine rule. So well done for sticking through that. Um, if you wanna have a go, um, if you just have a quick look at this. Okay, all you have to do is draw yourself a blank triangle. See if you can prove any of them. Don't get too stressed about it, out about it. If you can't, just keep having a look back, having a, having a rewatch over it, make some notes and yeah, have a go, see what you get. Um, but I'm not going to go over it again. You can always rewind the video, um, have another look over them, make some nice notes on them, and that is um, those three for you. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Well done for getting through that. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for one of the next ones.